This is a video on how to fix a courtesy light switch. I'm not showing you how to replace it. I'm actually showing you how to tear this apart and clean the contacts inside of it, put it back together so that you don't have to buy a new one. I'm going to just say light switch from now on. Saves a little bit of breath and time. I'm going to assume that you verified the switch is bad and it isn't something else like a bad fuse or a bad wire. Most of these switches are designed in a similar way. This one is out of a 97 Forerunner. Yours may be slightly different, but it should be a pretty similar concept. The cheapest one I found for this truck is about $17 with the shipping, which isn't bad. But this truck is old, worn out. I don't want to spend a whole lot of money on it. And I don't want to have to wait a few days for the parts either. I want to just get the job done. You've probably already figured out how to get this out of the Toyota door here. You just pull this little flat back that exposes the bolt, take the bolt out, and then you have to pull the inside panel back and you can get to this end that disconnects from the uh, main wiring system. Then they have a little piece of a uh, flap right here. So you have to peel the top part back, slide it down, display. All right, and then just set that aside. All right, now we got to cut each one of these little pieces of plastic that they've melted in here. You know, it's just those little pegs sticking through, and then they melt them down to hold all this together. We're going to cut those three out so that we can separate this part. And just take a razor knife, cut away from yourself, of course. A little pressure here. Be sure and cut away from this. You don't want to cut on that. Get most of that off. You can also push the button in to get it out of your way if you need to. I don't know if you can see if I'm doing that though. Maybe I can get it started. I got a handy dandy screwdriver here. Give it a little pry. There it went. Alright, so now pull this part off. This is the part that gives you your ground. You can see this little tab right here is one of the contacts and I don't know if you can see it good enough, but there's a lot of corrosion on there. Hopefully you can see the corrosion on this piece. Um, this file's a little bit big for the job, but I couldn't find my small file. You just, uh, I'm just going to take this corrosion off of here. Get it down to shiny metal again. All right, then on our next piece, just here, and this switch. Set this aside. This piece is just a continuous piece of metal that goes from one side through here to the other. And it's kind of springy, so to clean it, you have to put something up behind it to, uh, to allow you to get a little pressure. So I'm just going to put my flathead screw, screwdriver right here under it. Hopefully, I can get around the camera here and do this. And Clean it good with a wire brush or scrape it with a knife or whatever you feel like is appropriate. Switch and clean the other side here. Wire brush is a little worn out. Should be good enough. The other contact on this one's kind of hard to get to is this right up inside here, which would actually be in the top of this because I got it upside down. But, uh, right up in here is the other contact that I'm going to have to clean, and I'll just have to uh, reach up in there since I can't find my small file. I'll just reach in here with my razor knife and scrape it a little bit. I'll probably do this a little bit better off camera. It's kind 
hard to do reaching around the camera like this. And I'll clean it up a little bit better off camera. Alright, so next we just got to make sure that the spring goes over the post in the center. I'll put a tad of dielectric grease on here, which I'm cheating here. This is just Vaseline. I didn't feel like digging out my my true dielectric grease. I'm just going to put a tiny coat on here. Dielectric grease is probably the best thing to use. Alright, so once you got it snapped back together, just put it back in the car and uh, you know, it'll have the metal behind this surface so you really don't need to glue it together. You can just put it in like it is and the bolt will hold it together for you. You know, you may have a little bit of trouble keeping it all together if you cut too much of these posts off. It may not hold together real good for you uh, until you get the bolt in there in the car, but you know, there's really no need to have it held together you know once it gets gets in there it's fine so I wouldn't even worry about gluing it back together be sure to test your switch before you totally glue it together or wire it together or do anything that's going to be hard to undo because this switch had a bad corroded spot right in the middle of this contact and what it was doing is uh, as the plunger would come out it would make contact initially and then when it was all the way out it would lose contact because of that bad spot so I had to file this quite a bit to get it smooth so that uh, I got a good connection so be sure and hook you up an ohm meter or something like that and uh, you know test it several times to make sure that as it goes in and out that it that it doesn't get an intermittent connection and especially when it's all the way out you want to make sure it's got a good connection even when you wiggle the plunger just a little bit it should have a good connection still Depending on your design, you know, you may need to put a little bit of glue and maybe clamp it together with some vice grips or something, let it dry overnight. Just depends on your design. In this case, I don't need any. In other cars, you may need to drill some small holes up here. Um, luckily, this one already had holes in the metal, so I just had to drill holes in the plastic. And then you can wrap a wire through it or something like that to help hold it together. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to put a wire through here just in case that's what you end up having to do. Be sure to drill out towards the outside of this more than the inside because it uh, it does get into the casing of the inner part if you drill too close to the inner, inner part of it. So I'm kind of angling out a little bit. Be careful not to press too hard when it gives. You don't want to beat the uh, button up too bad with the drill. Kind of like I did just then. Alright. Now we got our holes drilled. And I have somewhere that I can put my small pieces of wire through. I'm, I'm going to use stainless steel wire. I get it from one of the hardware stores here in town. but. Um, I guess if you don't have stainless steel wire you can use something else but it'll probably corrode depending on where you're at. I'm in Florida so I'm going to use stainless steel wire. Alright, this might be kind of hard to show on camera but all I'm doing here is taking a small piece of wire coming in one hole going around behind it bending it. Alright, I know I have a hard time doing this on camera. Coming back out of the other hole. Yeah, this is going to be really hard to keep on camera here, but we'll keep trying. Pull some of the slack out. I'm going to cut the excess off here and keep working it until I get it kind of snug. Needle nose work pretty good. You can just 
pull it both directions. Trying to watch the camera and watch what I'm doing at the same time. It's not real easy here. Then you can kind of bend this around the front here. Just don't want to get it up against the plunger where it interferes with anything. And you need it kind of snug so that it's out of the way of the rubber boot that goes on. And this side, same thing, just keep it kind of tight. That's probably snug enough. Well, oh, sorry. Got off camera there for a minute. So that's probably snug enough to keep it all together. You can give it a test push and make sure that it doesn't come apart. Looks good. You can just slip your boot back on. If your wire is too thick, you're going to have a hard time with this part. And of course, you want to test it with an ohm meter or a test light or something before you go too crazy with this. Make sure that your inner parts are working right. And then bolt it back in the car, and you're good to go. Now, this switch was on an older truck that I have access to all the time. I'm not you know, concerned about it if it doesn't work just right. It's no big deal. I'll pop it back out and work on it again. But you know, if it's a truck that you're only getting one shot at and it's difficult to get this switch in and out, uh, I would say definitely use the dielectric grease instead of the Vaseline. And be sure and test it with your own meter to make sure it has a nice consistent reading as you're pushing that plunger in and out. You know, it, Even when you just touch it a little bit or wiggle it, like that, you know, it, it shouldn't change its reading you know, until you push it in quite a bit. You don't want to have to turn around and pull it right back out. If it doesn't give you a good reading, then you've probably got you know, some corrosion on the switch or some pitting on some parts of the switch, or uh, you need some dielectric grease in there to keep it good and clean and operating smooth. If you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.